<laughs> by now I can break and by now I can break and repair any sword if I try, not just that of a rose, and kill and revive as I pleased. Come, the barrier of the storm is now sealed, Rok and Jima off from the natural world. Now is the time for the golden witch Beatrice to descend as the eternal witch. Beatrice pulled from her pocket an envelope with the family crest, the one winged eagle, and gave it to Maria. Sorry, I'm making a finger gun with a, or a rubber band gun with my fingers. It's really fun. Interesting. Oops. Maria. F Maria frolicked around at being selected to be the witch's messenger. <laughs> so. But so kins, but uh, so kinzo, I've come to join in on your fun once more. My preparations are already complete. What of you? Have you prepared enough coins to bet in tonight's game? I fully prepared for the iteration. I've assembled a plethora of pieces. I'm already mentally phys I'm, I'm ready both physically and mentally. Uh, I forgot the voice. The, vo the, the voice he did for him has already become a parody of itself. Yeah. <laughs> what register was I working in for? You're like about three levels down from where you currently are. <laughs> A bit less um, mumble, I'd say. So, <clears throat> God damn. It was not hurting before, it's hurting me to do it now. I don't know what it is. I, I'm doing it wrong, clearly. You had a lot less mumble going on. So then. Let us make the ante. It's too clear before he has like a crumble. Yeah, it's a tough balance. All that you've given should be returned to you in the end. Come take it. Kinzo flung the window of his study open wide, took off his valuable golden ring that had been on his finger and threw it into the darkness of the raging wind and rain. That ring was struck by lightning, and after twinkling gold for an instant, disappeared. Kinzo watched go, grinning broadly and fearlessly. I don't think i lose. You are mine. Forever! Is that closer? Yeah. There's a lot of anger in that, so it's a lot different from the first scene he was in. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> the ring that Kinzo had thrown became a single gold butterfly and fluttered around in the wind and rain. I'm gonna have to rewatch the study of his voice. It headed for the rose garden, almost as though it had been guided there. I then found the figure of the Golden Witch and fluttered down. Oh. When it came down right in front of Beatrice, it burst open and returned to its original form, flying through the air. The way it was going, you wouldn't have expected it to fall into a puddle, but it stopped suddenly in midair. Almost as though some transparent person had caught it. Dude. Holy shit, I solved it. Yeah? I solved the whole mystery. Tell me. Are you familiar with the novel, The Invisible Man? Oh, uh, an invisible guy killed everyone, right? Somebody in a suit that has, like...
Hello? Hey. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Okay, sorry. I, you know how the thing is, like, when I accidentally unplug my headphones? Oh, uh, yeah. I get that. Yeah. This is the restart. I'm glad I just I remembered to save. That would have hurt. <laughs> We've made decent progress. This Dude, this is like our fastest pace yet. Yeah. Oh. At least I oh, scoot. <laughs> these voices are just so fun. We are. Maybe actually, by the end. Maybe by the end of the game. series. Well, uh, maybe by the end of the series, we'll actually uh, I'll get better. Yeah. It makes me want to read more when I have these voices to look forward to. Yeah, they're funny, quirky little characters now. They're you now. Kinzo, though, I have to do earlier because I think my voice is just more warm before it's m more tired and worn out. Yeah. Grinaldi's hand. Yeah. <laughs> Deleted user, 4,000. This could have been us. This could have been us. It was your fault. Really? Oh, I forgot to hit the... Damn it. Ah! Everyone started bad mouthing Monop Discord Monopoly, and I lost motivation. Because <laughs> we, because everyone was saying you were like doing it wrong, which is true. I wasn't. What was I doing wrong? You were just doing it in a weirdly convoluted way. I wasn't. Maybe if I can make a bot. We're back, folks. Can you do a really flamboyant voice? That's what I was asking. Uh. No? You guess so? Okay. Next Get time. ready. Oh, we're getting... Okay. Next time I'll prepare a bunch of voices. But it stopped suddenly in midair. Almost as if some transparent person had caught it. Oh, so what I was saying. I Apparently even Beatrice had... Shut up, oh. shut up, shut up, shut up. I figured the entire damn story out, okay? And yeah. But did you did you answer me? Have you ever read The Invisible Man? I've never. I've read an excerpt of it. Yeah. Okay. So have I. Well, have you ever watched <laughs> any of the movies? No. Okay. So the basic principle is that the Invisible Man, I and mean, this is the, the 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 story that's not written by Ralph Epsilon, I think, because he wrote a different story. About <laughs> Epsilon. I think that's his name. He wrote like a book about racism, uh -huh. but the original, um, what's it called Invisible Man, is about a scientist who wants to. I can't remember why, but for some reason, wants to be invisible, just for like momentary moments. And yeah. So he develops this cloak. And it has a bunch of like cameras on it, or whatever, that reflect light. Mm -hmm. And so basically, he's a walking mirror. When, like the suit is a giant mirror, so you can't yeah. see him. And it like disperses lights or whatever, so it looks like he's completely invisible. And so that's the bit where I think that there's somebody wearing the suit from the Invisible Man. So someone used magic to turn themselves invisible no, and kill magic. everyone. In both the original book, movie, and the newest movie. They're all sci he's a scientist who made who invented so, this technology. Magical no, it's uh, not no, scientific. Super advanced uh, technology in air quotes. This book this book that, was written in the fifties, I think. Maybe earlier. Uh, it just sounds like magic to me. It's not magic, yeah. Like, oh, he turned himself invisible with uh, science in quotes. Yeah, science. Sure, yeah, whatever. H yeah, it was H. G. Wells' novel. I'm sure. So, uh, so it's H not magic. H. G. Wells wrote in 1897. Yeah. I think in that story, it was like a potion. I don't think so. I think he drank a potion and it turned him invisible well, forever. Because well, the whole point is that he's invisible forever. If he put on a cloak, then he could just no, turn no, uninvisible. No, no, when the core so concept listen, is that he is up, always up, invisible. Up, shut up, shut up. If he was, regardless, what it was, was that he was invisible. Don't say regardless, because the no, whole no, 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 point no, no, of the saying, story is that... No, 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 let me, let me finish. 
I said, regardless, he was a scientist who invented a way to make himself invisible. I think you're right that he... That's just magic. I remember that in the original book, he wanted to become invisible for his own, like, greedy purposes or whatever, but then ended up actually making himself a monster, and so he was invisible forever. And then the whole thing is, you know, that story. Yeah. And then in the newer iteration, they made him... Uh, it made it was more grounded in science and less in alchemy. Because everything back then was alchemy, like in Frankenstein. The it just China sounds like magic in the me. island of Dr. Moreau. Apparently, even Beatrice hadn't expected this. So I'm reading the plot synopsis on, <laughs> on Wikipedia. I remember reading the one, like, the section where he's like, where someone first sees him being unraveled as an um, invisible man. I'm putting a spoon up to my eye. He's sitting in, like, the chair next to the, ca the fire. Oh my gosh, you're spooning it that far a behind your eye? It's a grandfather clock. Oh, I can't get the spoon out, Casey. Mm -hmm. I stuck like a spoon Sorry. into my eye socket to see if I could. And I can't get it out. Oh, I got it out. I got it out. What are you talking about? Nothing. You're talking about the invisible man. I want to hear about it. Well, I was just recalling the scene where... Um, oh, from that... Yeah, I remember that. He was getting, like, coffee. He's like, I'm invisible now. There's, like, a grandfather clock. And they're saying that... Um, so, the method he was... was blind to the human eye because the way that he was absorbing incoming light. So, so magic. I don't know. No, no, no. Someone wrote in like a scientific journal, like in the early 20th century, about how it could tech theoretically be scientifically possible. Any sufficiently well, why couldn't someone just build a teleporter button that teleports them anywhere on the island and teleports like stakes into people's skulls? That's possible. It's fiction. Yeah. That's true. You know, I'm sticking with my teleporter theory. It's you know, not magic. This is what you're it's doing. a super you're doing. advanced you're doing teleporter. All this, like, you're just, all this speak, all these words that you're saying are being dismissive of my theory because you know it's true. The, the writing's on the walls. As Almost as if someone transparent <laughs> person caught it. That's Do you think some, we're going to catch that's not this some, invisible man? This, this, is, this isn't some... some Let's keep fancy, reading. Let's see if we catch this. this Let's catch fancy, this invisible man. Way of speaking. This is a clue. Everything in this book is a clue. Every word matters except the rose oh. garden scene. Like you said. Okay. Well, Casey, okay, let's see if we can find any more signs of this invisible man. Everything's a sign of this invisible man. Everything makes sense if the man was an invisible man. If you can find a few more pieces of evidence, I will fully support your theory and stop berating you. Trying to remember. I'm Googling this. You're Googling what? I'll tell you if it's about Umineko. Who is the killer in... <laughs> okay. It's not an invisible man. Apparently, even Beatrice had expected this. However, she realized what, no, who it was, and grinned up broadly at it. The Invisible Man. The Invisible Man. I just googled it, and it turns out Goda and um, <laughs> Dr. Nanjo are the killers. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what was that theory you <laughs> It was uh, Goda and Kraus. It was Goda and Kraus? I thought it was Goda and... Well, Nanjo oh, was an accomplice. It's the Invisible Man! <laughs> okay, you're going to be this guy. Do a flamboyant voice. Oh. Unless you don't want to. I don't know if I want to. Okay. okay 
As she did, the shadow of the person who had caught the ring began to fuzzily appear. It's the invisible man. It's the invisible man. It was the figure of a young man <laughs> in Ireland. It was the portrait of a young man. It was the figure of a young man wearing a butler's uniform embroidered with the one-winged eagle. There is no man like this among the servants of the Ushiromiya family. Even so, Beatrice laughed as though it was someone she remembered fondly. Ronove, is it? It's been quite some time. It seems you have remembered me. You were always a man who took loyalty seriously. It has been quite some time since your last correspondence. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It has been quite some time since your last correspondence. I was thinking more like showboaty, but that could work. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, like flamboyant showman. I don't know. Not for a single day have I, Ronove, forgotten that I serve you, milady. So do you know. I was more yeah. afraid that you had forgotten about me. After all, you can be quite forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he. Ew, I really don't like his appearance. Well, he's probably in our right click menu. But, like, sorry, but the hair, the mustache do not match. He looks like. <laughs> like, if it wasn't for the mustache, I would say. Totally in a like rock band, maybe like yeah. emo punk or some like pop <laughs> punk or something. Yeah. The mustache throws it off because like you take away the hair, and he's like a bald man with that mustache, <laughs> like old man. That's why he's that's why he's not bald. But he'd be like an old like why is his mustache gray? You gotta click next. next. We're in the upside down. Oh, he's not there. there. What the heck? Oh, they haven't said the name yet. They did say the name, like, twice. No, they haven't. Renove or whatever? Oh. I see, I see, yes, I certainly am forgetful. I had forgotten even your sarcasm until I heard it again. The lady, take this. With an, with an exaggerated yet elegant gesture, he bowed respectfully. And held out to Beatrice the head king, the head's ring it's, that he had just caught. It's my dick in the box. <laughs> it is the Ushiro. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Ushiro Mia family head's ring. Sorry. Return to you from the Ushiro Mia Kinzo. Uh, sorry. Number 15. It is now once a. Sorry. I'm sorry. Really can you do that voice? Can you, can you do uh, the dude who does the? Can you, you can't. You can't do chills. Number fifteen. Number fifteen. Num and number now, fifteen. Once again, no, Kinzo's head bish, ring. Bish dog. It is now nah, once again in the possession of his master. Indeed. Ah, oh, you messed up my voice. This is Kinzo announcing the start of the game. Of course, I'll accept it. <laughs> How shall we play tonight? Shall I prepare the roulette immediately? Or shall I prepare some black tea first? I can't decide a witch, but first I need you to greet someone. Why are the witch, like the witch people, also cheeky? I'm sure that guy's got his mouth hanging open and cat shot it. Right, Batora. Oh yeah, yeah. Greetings. Allow me to introduce myself. I am called Renove, and I serve as the right, as the side of Milady Beatrice. We got the jingle, we got the jingle, we got the jingle. It is truly a pleasure to meet you. 
We got the jingle. I hear you. Jeez, I just wanted to get through my lines. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. One of the 72 great demons works for a master in exchange for various forms of compensation. He currently has a contract with Beatrice as her butler, head furniture. He's become proficient at housekeeping after serving in many ho households, so his ability as a butler is very high. In the high society of witches, employing him has become a kind of status symbol. Furthermore, the cookies he bakes are superb, and witches will often form a line demanding them. He must possess tremendous magical power. But, since he always stays out of the spotlight to further boost his master's reputation, his combat capabilities are unknown. Interesting, very interesting. See? His mouth's hanging open, and he can't shut it, right? Shut your mouth, bitch! <laughs> yeah, no shit. Another incomprehensible guy just showed up. Oh, come on, Ryukishi. That's some shitbag idiot writing. Sorry. That line sucked. Sorry. First, I grumble about goat-headed people doing the bond dance, and then goat heads start showing up in swarms. And since then, not only have these seven ass Nissans appeared, but now there's even a butler. Come on, I don't think that was cars are that bad. What? Yeah, it was a little quip. What? It doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense. Cut it out. I usually don't like it. <laughs> Quips have to be yeah. really funny for me to. to it wasn't. Like it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny at all. It was um. I don't think that brand that car brand is that bad battler. I was, gonna say, I was literally going to say, not only have these seven ass Nissans appeared, but now there's a Chevrolet. That's oh, that's a good one. That's a way better. <laughs> By the way, Batara, did you notice? Notice my nuts on your face? <laughs> did you realize that meeting him is a true devil's proof? Devil's proof? What do you mean? He may not look like it, but this guy is one of the 72, a genuine demon. Oh, you don't like that? No, I said how I just knew you were going to. Oh yeah, it fits the voice. In in other words, I've brought a demon right in front of you, which surely proves that they exist. How do I know he's a demon, though? <laughs> he's a demon. She didn't say it in red text, so I don't believe. holds a noble rank in hell, the 27th highest ranked great demon. He's a pretty... He just said 72. So he's, 70, he's 27 out of 72? Yeah. That's not that high. Well, they're great demons. I mean, they're great demons. They're not like lesser demons. He's barely in the 50th percent. Or t of, the, of, 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 the tr of the trillions of demons, he's one of the 72. I mean, out of trillions of demons, he's one of the 72. What is it? I said, how many demons are there? And you said 72. I'm really confused. Hello? 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 Let's see, wake up. I don't like this. Hello? 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 I think my computer froze. Hello? Hello? No, that was me. That was me. No, I saw I, I didn't. I was trying to press buttons, but I wasn't going. Oh, I restarted my Wi-Fi and, and everything came back, so I think it was me. He's a pretty useful man. I summoned him at high cost and made him serve me. Stewie. No. What does Peter Griffin sound like? Lord. Hey, Lower. Hey, Lowish. <laughs> hey, Lowish. <laughs> hey, Lowish. 
That's close. That's closer. You gotta, hey, Lois. You gotta do a lot of sh you gotta do a lot of stuff on the right side of your mouth. You just gotta hey, like Lois. I think German talks like Peter Griffin. <laughs> His family guy impressions are really good. <laughs> so bad, which is funny because he's from Boston, so you can really have decent Family Guy impressions. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. The only one I know is what is her name? What, what's the wife's name? Lois. Lois, that's right. I literally just said it. A hey, Peter. And it's not that good, but that's the only one I know who's what they sound like. Oh, and Stewie does like the British. Peter. What the douche? What, what the douche? What the douche? I don't know who says that, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny. Next. It is an honor to meet you. Well, my name is amongst those the nobles of hell. I now serve as the head of furniture of who, despite being a vulgar human, is a great witch of such caliber that demons flee before her. <laughs> he's a very useful man, but he's impudent with his words. Frustratingly enough, he sometimes forgets to respect his master. Nothing in my contract specifies the manner in which I am to speak. Would you like to change that contract? It keeps me entertained, so it is fine. <laughs> Beatrice turned her back to him, cackling. After bowing once to her back, Ronove turned back to Battler and struck, stuck out his right hand, showing off an innocent smile. Normally this would mean that he was asking for a handshake. What is this supposed to be? I am another who has been subjected to the lady's whims. In that sense, I am sure I great This... Is a handshake of friendship. <laughs> of course, this is no way implies your entry into a contract with the demon, so fear not. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, I'm right in the middle of a big fight. I only shake hands with an enemy after we've beaten each other up in a rainy schoolyard and we're all worn out because of the teen drama. Remember that. I see. To shake hands with you, Battle-sama, I must create a fitting atmosphere in a suitable location. Exchanging sweet words and physical language with you brings true to your heart. When the opportunity arrives, I shall arrange for such an encounter. I must say, I simply love situations like that myself. Not exactly sure how they wanted me to pronounce them. Love. I don't know. <laughs> Poo -coo 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 -coo. <laughs> what does that mean? That's his laugh. It's like a. As Ronave laughed tauntingly, he whispered to Battler, wringing his face so close that their noses were almost touching. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Battler, his face turning red after getting so close to another of the same sex, pushed him away. You're a creepy bastard. <laughs> I see. Just right for Beato's butler. It is an honor to receive such words of praise. I'm very confident in my tea brewing abilities, so please look forward to tea time. Baking cookies is one of my hobbies, so please feel free to request any snacks you may desire. Just what I expect from a pair with the same gender. You started getting along well right off the bat. I'm jealous. My, my. I apologize for making you jealous. I shall not sneakily snatch your guest away from you. 
Well then, I will leave for now to retake my post as head furniture and greet my subordinates. Please forgive my short absence. Indeed. Only the common goats and the seven sisters used for the ceremony have manifested themselves. You'll be able to finish greeting them in no time. Oh, those lively seven sisters are here? I wonder if those naughty girls have grown a little more graceful. <laughs> If that's graceful, I have no doubt the def definition of the word grateful. Jeez, I butchered that. Is that so? <laughs> then I suppose you've already had the opportunity to play with those sisters. Judging by your expression, you would say they're just as naughty as always. Even though I'm always telling them to act more fitting as servants of Beatrice Sama, what troublesome kids. If that's your problem, don't worry. They actually act perfectly fitting for their master. <laughs> <laughs> now you, even you have begun to say it. However, a conversation means that you have accepted your partner. The fact that you've started to respond to my idle chatting proves that you are gradually starting to accept my existence. <laughs> That's because even if the sun starts rising from the west, I will definitely, absolutely never accept that you're a witch. You might want to try a more positive approach, like crying and kissing my shoes. Even if Battler was bluffing, he still spoke forcefully, a fearless expression on his face. The witch and her butler snickered together, realizing that their guest had regained more than enough of his willpower to attend to a new game, and that preparations were complete. After Ronove exchanged a few words with Beatrice, he bowed silently to Betala, scattered into several gold butterflies, and disappeared. Uh, it is truly pleasing to have such a boisterous atmosphere. How boring were the days when I was trapped alone on this island, unable to regain my power and lacking anyone to talk to. I get how that unpleasant guy is really fitting as your butler, but tell me. Why has that button only appeared now? You said something about how only the goats and the Nichans of the seven stakes had manifested themselves. What did that mean? Indeed. You still resist, but I am a fully fledged witch. I am in contact with several non-human entities in the spirit world. I'll bet. No sane people would hang out with you. First some goat monsters, and then those ass knee chans, and this time a demon butler showed up? I hate to think about it, but the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if more weird people appeared. Dude, I'm sorry, the dialogue sounds so much worse when it's like said out loud. <laughs> uh, I blame the translator. Maybe, I'm, maybe, yeah, maybe. I'm just not a fan. Of, <laughs> I'm just not a fan of Battler. His <laughs> style. He sounds like a Marvel character, like all the time. Nah, no, he don't. That's a grave insult. I'm sorry, but look at this. To Battler. I wouldn't be surprised if more weird people appeared. <laughs> <laughs> Among, Among the furniture that work at my great golden mansion, how many demons do you think want to come over and play? Among us. <laughs> they will keep coming. Many of them will appear. 
then the door to the garden land has opened. I will come back and call all my furniture and build my new castle here in Rokushima. Glad you're finally committing to the German. So <laughs> then I plan to invite all of my old friends, and we will drink and dance together for three days and three nights. Three days. Of course, I also plan to invite Kinjo's family, you see. <laughs> you too, if you wish. <laughs> so, is this what you mean? That since you lost your power for a long time, you couldn't summon them? And then, since your magic power has been gradually increasing, you become able to summon more and more monsters? It is, as you say, a stopped a hair's breadth before crumbling. But your heart is already wavering, and you are unable to deny that I am a witch. That wavering in your heart has slowly been restoring my power as a witch. So, are you trying to say that Creepy Butler appeared because I started to surrender? That's right. Bit by bit, you are surrendering to me. Uh, isn't all that humiliation you suffered in the last game a result of you submitting to me so deeply? Wasn't it great when you had to sacrifice your back for the sake of my feet? I thought I'd be able to keep things as, the way, as they were as long as I didn't accept it. But it looks like that was wrong. Correct. The closer you get to surrendering, the more the game will swing in my favor. Isn't chess the same? In the process of cornering each other's kings, we trade several pieces. Of course, I still haven't cornered your king. And furthermore, you're giving it everything you've got to help your king escape, and I've lost several pieces to me, as well as a large advantage. It is only natural that further developments will tend to turn in my favor. From now on, you'll probably be frantic as you try to avoid my checkmate. I hope this game ends the same way that that last chess, ma chess match we played ended, where it was just me moving one piece and <laughs> keep getting checked until I tell yeah. the game ended. Uh, I don't remember that. Wow. I was like two weeks nah. ago. Wait, wait, we played chess two weeks ago? Uh, it was like a year ago. Okay. However, as you do, I will steal your pieces from you one by one. In the end, you'll have lost everything but your king, and you won't be able to escape no matter how much you try. Then you will receive a true checkmate. That sucks. A True checkmate. Werner Ziegler. You were talking a big last time, weren't you? Something about how you'd never accept me and would torment me with eternal torture. Only witches who have reached the endless level can talk about eternity. That's beyond you ever since the very beginning. Twelve sixteen. One after Magna Carta. I couldn't. <laughs>